systems of equations. In this video, we're going to solve systems of equations using the elimination method, sometimes called the addition method, with me, Catherine. To solve using the elimination method, the first thing we have to do is line up both equations so like variables are on top of each other. Then, we multiply to get opposite numbers as a coefficient for one of the variables. We then add the equations down to eliminate one of the variables, solve for the variable that is left, and then back substitute to find the other one. No problem, right? Well, let me show you how this works. Use the elimination method to solve the following systems of equations. The first thing that we have to do is line up the variables so that they are on top of each other. And we're pretty lucky in this one because the x and the y's line up. I have the x's over the x's and the y's over the y's. In the elimination method, when we add straight down, we want to eliminate the x. That means we want to get 0x or the y. That means we want to get 0y. Right now when I add down, I end up with 12x minus 2y equals negative 56. That's not what we want. So I have to do something else. In that case, we're going to have to multiply either one or both of the equations, so we end up with opposite numbers. When I look at these equations, to get these two to be opposite, I'd have to multiply this one by negative 7 to make negative 35, and this one by a positive 5 to get positive 35. Negative 35 plus 35 is 0x, and that's okay, but that's a lot of work. Let's look at our y's. What if I multiplied this one by 3? Well then, we would have 3y minus 3y, which is 0y, and that's exactly what we want. So with this one, I'm going to multiply this first row by 3. 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times y is 3y. And then 3 times negative 16 is negative 48. I'm just going to rewrite the second row. Now, when I add straight down, I end up with 22x plus 0y, which is what we want, equals negative 88. My next step is to solve for x. That gives us 22x equals negative 88. I need x by itself, so I'm going to divide by 22. This leaves us with x equals negative 4. Our last step now is to find y. In this case, when we back substitute, it does not matter which equation we use. I decided to use the second one, but you could have used the first one. Now what I'm going to do is put negative 4 in for x. 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. I need to get negative 3y by itself, so I'm going to add 28 to both sides. This gives us negative 3y equals negative 12. I need to get y by itself, so I'm going to divide by negative 3 on both sides. It turns out that y is positive 4. Let's look at our possible answers. We can have a, the system has a single solution. That means we have an ordered pair, x, y. There are infinitely many solutions. That means that they're the same line. Or, the solution set is the empty set. That means the lines are parallel. For this one, the system has a single solution. And our ordered pair is x equals negative 4 and y equals 4. Let's say you didn't use the second equation. You decided to use the first equation. It's going to turn out exactly the same. Once again, I'm going to substitute negative 4 in for x. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. I need to add 20 to both sides, which gives us y equals 4. So you see, it really doesn't matter which equation you use, but you only have to use one of them. Let's try another one together. Solve the system by the elimination method. The first thing that we have to do is we have to line up the variables on top of each other. When I look here, the x's are on top of each other, but the y's are not. So with this first one, I'm going to have to get x, y, and equals to a number. The easiest way to do that is actually to subtract 2x from both sides. This leaves negative 8 equals negative 2x minus 4y. If we just flip it around, that gives us negative 2x minus 4y equals 8. Then our numbers line up. 
But there's something interesting about this. You could use this equation, but do you notice that they're all even numbers? Yeah, why make our life harder? So I decided to divide everything by negative 2. That gives us x plus 2y equals 4, and that's what I'm going to use. So instead of the first one, writing 2x minus 8 equals negative 4y, I'm going to write x plus 2y equals 4. And then the second one right underneath it. Now my x's and my y's line up. Next is to multiply 1 or both of the equations, so I get opposite numbers. So let's look at these equations. Do you notice that I have a plus 2y and a plus 2y? They're practically opposite. What I'm going to do is multiply one of them by negative 1. I could have done it to either one of them, but only one. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times 2y is negative 2y. And negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. The second one I'm just going to rewrite. Now, when we add straight down, we're going to get 2x plus 0y equals negative 12. We eliminated one of the variables, which is what we wanted to do. Now, I have to solve for x. I have 2x equals negative 12. I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides, which gives us x equals negative 6. Now, I have to back substitute to find y. Remember, when we back substitute, it does not matter which equation we use. In this case, I decided to use the second one. Since we know x is negative 6, I put negative 6 in for x. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Now I want to get 2y by itself. I'm going to add 18 to both sides, which gives us 2y equals 10. Then I have to divide by 2, and that gives us y equals 5. Let's look at our possible answers. It could be A, the system has a single solution, B, there are infinitely many solutions, that means that they're the same line, or C, the solution set is the empty set, that means when we graph it, they're parallel. In this case, hopefully you can see, the system has a single solution, and that solution is x equals negative 6 and y equals 5. Whenever we have a single solution, we always write it as an ordered pair, x, y. Let's look at another one. Use the elimination method to solve the following system of equations. The first thing we have to do is line them up so that x's are on top of each other and y's are on top of each other. Well, we're pretty lucky because that already happened. The next thing we do is multiply to get opposite numbers in each of the equations. I notice that I have 1x and 1x. I could multiply one of those by negative 1 and that would give me 0x. I could also do it for the y's. Multiply one of those by negative 1, and we'd get 0y. In this case, it does not matter which one we solve for. So I decided to solve for the x. I'm going to multiply the second equation by negative 1. The first one I'm going to leave alone. The second one, negative 1 times x, is negative x. Negative 1 times y is negative y and negative 1 times 9 is positive 9. Now, when we add down to eliminate one of the variables, something interesting happens. x minus x is 0x, y minus y is 0y, and then 7 plus 9 is 16. But does this make sense? So 0x, but does this really make sense? I mean 0x plus 0y is 0. Will 0 ever equal 16? Will this ever be true? Will 0 ever equal 16? No. So let's look at our possible solutions. It's not A, the system has a single solution, because we didn't get x by itself and y by itself. The system has infinitely many solutions. Well, that can't be true, because 0 equals 16 is not true. That means our answer is C. The solution is the empty set. In reality, these two lines are parallel. They have the same slope but not the same y-intercept. Solve the following system by the elimination method. The first thing we have to do is make sure that our variables are on top of each other. Well, we're pretty lucky in this case because we have the x's over the x's and the y's over the y's. Next, we need to multiply so that we have coefficients that are opposites. I notice here that I have a negative x and a negative 5x. If I multiply the first equation by negative 5, 
that's going to give me positive 5 minus 5, which is 0x, which eliminates one of the variables. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative 5. Negative 5 times negative x is positive 5x. Negative 5 times 3y is negative 15y, and negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. The second equation I'm going to leave alone. Now we're going to add straight down. 5x minus 5x is 0x. Great, but then we have negative 15y plus 15y. That's 0y. And even to make it look worse, negative 20 plus 20 is 0. That really means 0 equals 0. Well, we have to think about this for a second. Will this ever be true? Will 0 ever equal 0? Yeah, every single time. So let's look at our possible solutions. We know that it's not going to be a because we don't have an ordered pair. We don't have an x equal to something and a y equal to something. So our only two possible choices are b, there are infinitely many solutions, or c, the solution set is empty. Well, in the last one we did, we had 0 equal to a number, and we knew that could never be true. But in this case, 0 always equals 0. So that tells us that there are infinitely many solutions. Let me show you how this works. Remember, infinite solutions mean when we graph them, we have the same line. So let's look at our two equations. If I divide 5 out of the second equation, we end up with negative x plus 3y equals 4. And guess what? That's exactly like the first equation. So it is definitely true. There are infinite number of solutions because these two equations are the same line. Cool! Now it's your turn to try. You're going to pause the video, use the elimination method to find the correct answer, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. The first thing we have to do is line up the x and the y's. But in this case, they're not lined up yet, so we have to make them lined up. What I'm going to do is simply subtract 3x from both sides. That gives me negative 7 equals negative 5x minus 3y. Flipping them around, I have negative 3x minus 5y equals negative 7. And that's going to work perfect. But there's something I did notice, that these are all negative numbers. Now, we could leave it, that's no problem. But what if I divided everything by negative 1? That would give us 3x plus 5y equals 7. It makes our lives a little easier. Now, when we rewrite them, the x's are on top of each other, and the y's are on top of each other. Perfect. Our next step is to eliminate either the x, that means when we add down we get 0x, or eliminate the y's, that means when I add down I get a 0y. This one's a little tough because we don't have a 1x or a 1y, or something really easy. When I look at the x's, if I multiplied the first equation by negative 5, I would have negative 15x. If I multiplied the second equation by positive 3, I would have a positive 15x. Negative 15x plus 15x is 0x, and that would eliminate one of our variables. So that's what I decided to do. I could have multiplied this one by negative 4, and this one by positive 5, to eliminate the y's. Either way works. But like I said, but like I said, I multiplied the first one by negative 5, and the second one by positive 3. Negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x. Negative y times 5y is negative 25y. And negative 5 times 7 is negative 35. 3 times 5 is positive 15. 3 times 4y is positive 12y. And 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. So now, when I add straight down, I end up with a 0x minus 13y equals negative 65. Great! I got rid of my x's. The next job is to get y by itself. I'm going to divide by negative 13 on both sides, which gives us y equals 5. Perfect! Since we have y, we need to find x. When we back substitute, it does not matter which equation we use. I like to back substitute into one of the original equations just in case I made a mistake. This time, I decided to use the second one. 
all I do is substitute 5 in for y. 4 times 5 is 20. Now I need to get 5x by itself. I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, which gives us 5x equals negative 30. I jumped the gun a little bit, but I'm going to divide by 5, so x equals negative 6. Let's look at our possible answers. It could be A, the system has a single solution. B, there are infinitely many solutions. Or C, the solution set is the empty set. Well, in this case, we definitely have an ordered pair, and our solution set is negative 6, 5. X is negative 6, and Y is 5. Here's another one for you to try. You're going to pause the video, use the elimination method to find the correct answer, then press play to check. All right, let's see how you did. The first thing we have to do is line up our x and y's, and we're pretty lucky with this one because they're already lined up. Now we have to decide, are we going to get rid of the x's or the y's? When I look at my x's, I can see that if I multiplied this one by negative 2, I'd have negative 6, and negative 6 plus 6 is 0x. That would be the easiest. You could have multiplied this row by 9, and this row by 8, and gotten rid of your y's. Either way is perfect. But I decided to get rid of the x's, so I multiplied the first row by negative 2. Negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x. Negative 2 times negative 8y is 16y, and negative 2 times 0 is 0. Then I just rewrote the second equation. Our next step is to add straight down, to eliminate one of the variables. Remember, we're trying to get 0x or 0y. I ended up with 0x, and that's what I wanted to do. So I have 0x plus 25y equals 0. Now I have to solve for y. That means I have to divide by 25. This gives me y equals 0. Now that I found y, I have to find x. It doesn't matter which equation you use, but I decided to use the second one. In this case, y is 0. So I put 0 in for y. 9 times 0 is 0. 6x plus 0 is 6x. Now, to get x by itself, I have to divide by 6. So it turns out that x is also 0. The answer for this one is A. The system has a single solution. And in this case, the ordered pair, x, y, is 0, 0. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to pin me to Pinterest. The only way to get good at solving systems of linear equations using the elimination method is to practice, practice, practice. Be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss another exciting episode with me, Catherine. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.